Hi, I'm Tim Ward and I work for IBM and I'm also a member of the core platform and enterprise expert groups for OSGI and I've been doing standardization work there for a number of years. So uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is the JPA service specification which I was a co-specification lead for. Now I'm going to give you an overview of JPA in Java SE and an overview of JPA in OSGI and we're going to see why JPA in OSGI has to be a little bit different and why you can't just do the same things you did when you were in Java SE. Right, so let's start by taking a look at what happens in Java SE. So, here, as uh, I'm sure many of you will be aware, you're going to need a few different jars. You're going to need the JPA API jar. You're going to need your persistence provider. Importantly, you're going to need your persistence archive. So this is the code you've written. And this contains, amongst other things, your entity classes and your persistence XML. So when you come along, you've got some code that wants to make use of your uh, persistence unit. What happens is you call out into the JPA API, which is fine. You can do that. It then uses a lookup mechanism, uh, which depending on the version of JPA you use will either be something like meta persistence or it will use one of the built-in providers that's new in the later versions of Java to find your persistence provider and then your persistence provider will close the loop back to find your persistence XML and your entities and then this will all flow back right round and you get given an entity manager object and everybody's happy they've all got what they want now, as you can see, this kind of relies on the, f the fact that, OSG, uh, that in Java SE, unlike OSGI, you've got a really flat class path. So that's a bit of a problem. If we look at what it's going to be like in OSGI, we see that we still have the bundles that we had before. So that's the JPA API. Here we have our provider. And here we have our persistence bundle. So, still got our entities in here. And our persistence XML. But when we make this call, which we can still do because we've got an import package saying we import the Javax persistence package so we can do, do that bit. We end up with the JPA API saying, well, I need to find a provider. And it looks for meta persistence, but this guy's meta persistence directory is hidden, so you can't do that. So you're a bit stuck. Now, people have gotten around this by trying to sort of create wirings between these bundles and doing all manner of unpleasant things. But actually, even when you do that, you end up here in the provider, and you've lost any notion of where the original persistence archive was. And so you're trying to look up and find this persistence XML. And that doesn't work either. So life's pretty tough, and you know there are all manner of hacks that people have produced to try and make this work. But the best thing to do is actually to stop trying to make OSGI look like Java SE and start looking at it like it's really OSGI. So what happens with the JPA service spec is we say, well, realistically, you don't want to be making all these calls out. So we introduce a another bundle, which is the extender bundle for JPA, which is a bit like a, a helper bundle, really. 
So what happens is the extender bundle notices that your persistence archive is there. And then on your behalf, it says, right, we're going to need to find you a persistence provider, which it does using an OSGI service. And using that service, it creates an entity manager factory that you can look up in the service registry and use. So say you've got some code here that wants to make use of that entity manager factory. It can just look it up and everything's great. And all you have to do to make this work in OSGI is to take your persistence bundle and make sure that you specify one crucial header, which is the meta persistence header. That header needs to point at where your persistence XML is. So for most people, that will be meta in persistence XML. But it could be anything you like. In fact, you can have a list of them. So you could even just call it pu.xml and have it in the root of your bundle. And by doing something like that, what you allow yourself to do is you allow yourself to get an entity manager factory in a nice, clean, safe way. And you don't have to do any of the horrible hackery that people uh, will walk you through when they say, oh, well, you can make it work if you add this import and that import and require this bundle. So just remember, if people start telling you to do those things, just think back, stick a meta persistence on, and you'll be okay.